So it's that time of year again. Um, we are getting ready for the spring nectar flow around here and it is time to assemble a whole bunch of hive frames so that the bees can continue to expand their hive and um, start putting up nectar so we can extract honey starting in, uh, hopefully starting in June or July, we'll start getting some honey off of them. But the most important thing, of course, is to uh, give the bees something to put their honey in. And of course, that involves building a whole bunch of uh, frames for them to build comb on and store their honey in. Now, uh, frame building is probably one of the most tedious portions or tedious parts of beekeeping. Uh, it takes quite some time to get all of those little frames together to, um, uh, to build them into something. There's a whole lot of pieces and parts that you have to deal with. Now, when I first started beekeeping, I went out and I bought a whole bunch of um, uh, pre-assembled frames. They have the foundation already in them. and. Uh, they were pre-assembled frames and of course you can imagine they were extremely expensive that way so i quickly discovered that you know this is not going to work i'm going to have to figure out i'm going to have to figure out something else i'm going to do have to do this myself or this is just not going to be something that i can afford to do so i got some and i attempted to, attempted to assemble them myself and assembling frames one at a time really honestly just doesn't work you need some kind of jig in order to be more efficient with the assembling of, of these frames. So I got on the internet, of course, like anybody would do, and I looked up different designs on frame jigs. And the ones that I found were kind of complicated. They had these, these springs and... and whatever else in them that just didn't make, I don't know, it almost seemed like they were complicating an issue that they were trying to solve. So I thought about it long and hard and came up with my own design. So let's put this to the side and get that out. So y'all can check this out. This is what I came up with. Now, honest to goodness, all this is is two wooden boxes of different sizes, one inside the other. Now, this one right here, it says frame assembly jig, nine frames. The reason it says nine frames, I probably um, did the dimensions wrong in the first place and ended up with the wrong size. So, seeing as how I use 10 frame equipment, I had to make this one instead. So, all this is, as you can see, is two different size wooden boxes stuck together. Now, if you want to stop now and get a piece of paper and pen handy, I'll give you the dimensions of these two boxes so you can build your own. I mean, this is like, honest to goodness, this is probably 30 minutes worth of work to get these done, and it'll save you hours. Um, I will post these dimensions in the description of this video, but I'll go ahead and uh, give them to you now. This is just a simple butt jointed box, and these two end pieces are going to measure, this is three quarter inch lumber, these two end pieces are going to measure, it's going to be 15 and 7 eighths on the ends right here. Now these middle two pieces, your inside dimension is going to be 17 and 7 eighths. The other box, it's the same concept. It's a butt joint box. And it's just a little bit smaller than the other one designed to fit inside of it. The end pieces are 13 and 5 eighths. And these inside dimensions are going to be 15 and 3 sixteenths. Now they don't have to be exact. I'm sure you can get away with 15 and a quarter. It's really not that serious. But I'll put those dimensions in the description of this video so you can build, uh, build your own if you, if, you, if you choose to. So let's go ahead and, and get started here. And I will try to give you all an idea of how quick it is. Now, there was a time when I had a nail gun when I was doing this and using my dad's tools. I had access to a nail gun, and I'm sure I could run up and get it if I wanted, but 
I'm just gonna I'm just gonna use what I've got in my place here. I use tight bond, uh, excuse me, tight bond two because, uh, in addition to being a great glue, it is weather resistant. And I just put a little drop on all of these. This is the top bar section of these side side pieces, and I try to put these drops of glue off to the side a little bit because these top bars have actually got a groove in them right here. And if you put it directly in the middle right there, a lot of your glue is just going to go up in there and do, it's not going to do you a whole lot of good. Like I said, when I had a, when I had a nail gun, air powered nail gun, pneumatic nail gun, it was um, much faster. But this still still beats doing them freehanded. I guess you can do them freehanded. Do people do them freehanded still? I don't know. There are a lot of options for jigs out there. I like to use four penny nails for these top bars. The standard frame nails is that they send you with these frames are quite small and I, I suppose you could probably use two but that's a, that's a four penny nail right there and that's going to be your standard frame nail that usually gets sent. So it's, you can see it's about the same length but it's, uh, it's quite a bit larger. Gets a little more, gets a little more bite on those. Missed one right here, but that was driving some of y'all crazy. So at this point, I always go ahead and put my—I <clears throat> don't know what you'd call it—a maker's mark or brand or I don't know. Mostly it's just to tell me what, what year these frames went into service so I can tell how old they are. Now I use organic treatments so for mites so the purpose of this is not so I know when to remove frames because of pesticide buildup, contamination, but it's just to let me know the age of these frames. So at this point, take it, flip it over, and we're going to do the same thing on this side. And for these, it's kind of hard to get just a very small amount on the uh, bottom bar. Receptacle or female end or whatever you call it. bottom of the frame sides here. It's tough to get just a small amount on there. So what I will do is we'll do that and go ahead and take this out. And go ahead and start placing this foundation. Now I use waxed 
pre-waxed right cell foundation and it works great for me it's plastic foundation I know some people complain that the bees don't draw it out very well and they have to spray sugar water or put extra wax on them or whatever that hasn't been my experience as long as your bees have got sufficient nectar they'll draw out now, there was a time when I didn't use any foundation at all and I let the bees build whatever size foundation that they cared to build and I believed in that approach and I still do believe in that approach because you know there's the whole there's the whole debate about you always get one that doesn't want to cooperate with you there's the whole debate of course about the um, small cell foundation and large cell foundation and how small cell foundation was the original is the proper cell size for the honeybee and that's what's found in nature and I believe the size is 4.8 millimeter and the only reason that we have five point was it five point four millimeter something like that the only reason that we have that is because it allows more honey to be stored is it that or is it or is it the quest to build a bigger bee that can in turn store more honey or produce more honey I'm not sure it's one of those things but either way I used to I used to believe in the natural approach to, um, to let bees build out their own comb and build whatever size they pleased and I really think that's a good approach I think that's a, a great approach quite honestly I would continue to do it except or I get a lot of blowouts when I'm extracting honey that way. And I realize that you can wire those frames, pre-wire them, and let the bees build, build comb around that wire, and that will solve that problem. But, but man, that stuff is really time consuming. Now on these bottoms, I just use one of the one of those standard small frame nails. The reason, I, the reason that I like those big heavy nails on the top is because I have experienced it quite a few times and I know that you have too if you've kept bees for any length of time. It's going to happen when you're attempting to get when you're attempting to get those frames out of there when they have out of the hive after they have propolized and stuck everything together so badly sometimes those top bars will just come right off and once that happens I mean that's a pain what I usually do in that situation is I will figure out figure out some kind of a better way to get that frame out I'll pry out the ones from around it or something like that and get it out and then I'll stick it back together and just let the bees propolize it back over I pray that that's good enough honestly I should probably stick a nail in it or something in that situation but. But anyhow, all right, so after that is done, make sure that the frames are laying on the top bar itself. Go ahead and take that inner portion off, I'm sorry, the outer portion off. You're going to put a box upside down on these frames, and just like magic, 
as your box of frames. I really appreciate you guys watching and I hope this helps somebody.